Hey everyone, this is a video just uh, giving you an update on my knife collection in 2020, my views, what it meant to be collecting, what I ultimately end up liking as of now, of course, and then uh, kind of my evolution of the collection over a, a more than a decade, but at least a decade doing videos. Where am I at now with my collection? You know, I, I uh, really like pocket knives and everyday carry items. Um, but I found there's just, I think I honed in on what I like. And it's not decorative art knives. It's, it's not knives that are kind of not intended to be used. So collector's knives where they might be one of a kind or one of five. I don't like those. I don't like to buy them and just have to look at them and it's not me i get it but i'd rather use my knives so i tend to like the the user knives a bit of the mid-range i like uniqueness um but any of them will do but these are the knives that you have often seen in my videos and i did a someone sent me a free one to review and i did that and you know it's for the, for the price it's actually a pretty good knife i kind of use it to cut up boxes and kind of just in the garage and it, it works pretty well what um but what i gravitate to are are these items uh, my phoenix uh, p30 it's not this one but one like this one small easy to carry simple flashlight I still find the rechargeable battery ones a uh, pain in the butt. They don't work as well. I don't know why, but that's just my experience. Um, but what do I actually use so much? And it, I really like this one, the Benchmade. Um, they kind of lock back knives. They don't lock, sorry, they don't, they're non locking, they're slip joint knives. Um, I just think these are great. There's limited to no legal issues depending on where you are. Um, they're lightweight to carry, they're comfortable, and they come with really cool steel, S30V. Um, when I started out collecting, they didn't have these normal pocket knives, traditional pocket knives, with good materials. It, they're cheap, plastic, not even G10 scales, um, but they kind of fixed that over time, or the last three to four years in my opinion. So you can get the linen micarta scales, you can get G10, you can get the nice steel, S30V, um, you can get the skeletonized material inside so it's a bit lighter weight but still strong. I mean, reality is this is the one that I, I use the most. After that, I probably gravitate to the Benchmade 940. I think it is, does that focus that close? Maybe not. So this is a special version with the carbon fiber, but these things are great. You know, if you want one premium knife, this is, this is the one it's tear through most anything in my world, boxes, I don't know, weekend chore type activities. It's just really cool with the blue ionized, anodized? I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments, like you always do. Um, barrel spacers here. So the quality on this one's held up great. No blade wiggle, sharp easy to sharpen, pocket clip works, no fading. And then I probably go to my Sabenza, my Carta Sabenza. I have a few of these and I know it's like Burger King versus McDonald's, Coke versus Pepsi with in the knife community of at least when I was active, fairly active, uh, Sabenza or Strider. For me, it's all the way um, Sabenza, Chris Reeves knives. They're just better quality in my opinion. They're more of a utility knife. They have a large blade. They're traditional way you hold them. You can get a lot of leverage. I think the quality is good. Easy to maintain. 
Um, I've not had to do any real maintenance, maintenance with this one other than just normal cleaning. I don't think I've ever, you know, I know I've not taken it apart other than to get the, um, I think the tassel off. And yeah, I don't like the tassels that come with it. And so ranking this, and then I'll go to the paramilitaries. I would say, uh, I mean, these are great. These are super sharp. In some instances, could be too sharp. You open boxes quickly, but if you slip up and use it wrong, you can puncture something pretty easily because the, the point is so sharp. But these are great knives. They're, again, all in this medium size zone that I like. Medium size knife, you know, this is my favorite, but then I go up to the medium size. And then, then I go through a phase of, you know, this is what you know, is carried 70% of the time. This comes out uh, a little more uh, weekend stuff, perhaps. And then um, if I want to just have something fun, I'll bring out this Emerson knife and I'll carry it around the weekends. Play with the opening and closing and the wave, all that HD7 here. But it's actually, I don't think it's great to cut with. The Tanto point is, can be difficult. People argue, well, they're not as sharp or they're not as good as knives. They're, they're a knife, they're gonna cut through things. The serrations, you lose a little bit of the edge here. So it's gonna do the job, but is it going to do the job as well as the Sabenza or the paramilitary? No, it won't just the way, the way the blade shape is and how the um, blade is sharpened uh, to one side. So does it mean it's a bad knife? No, but I think if you're gonna test it on a box, this is gonna cut through the box faster, more cleanly. As far as, yeah, it's good. And then I got a lot of striders in my videos and they were, Kind of the fun, cool knife for a while. Expensive. All these are fairly expensive. Um, you know, what's my thoughts on these in 2020? Now that I'm not focused on my knife hobby as much. Uh, they're unique. They're kind of fun. But I don't actually gravitate to these um, if I need something done. They're... They're more like a, they're a utility knife. They're kind of a blunt object if you need to pry something and get something dirty and beat it up that, you know, this is the knife. If you can get past, you spend a chunk of change on the knife, you, you can beat it up pretty hard. But is it, um, for what I need to do, is it as efficient as the Sabenza or the 940 or even this? I'm, I'm going to say no. It, it's can sharpen it and it'll cut through pretty fast, faster than the Emerson. But it, the one I got, the dual gunner grip, the kind of roughed up G10, it's um, it's not as comfortable to use. I don't think you get as much leverage the way that the handle and the blade is here. You, you, the kind of way you hold it's like this. You know, depending on what you're doing, you know, it, you may not be able to put as much pressure on it. Like if you're gonna hold it like this versus the traditional knife handle here, push down. It's debatable, but that's, all these are my opinion, right? So that gets used a lot. And then as far as, sorry, that, that, <laughs> that doesn't get used as much, but these first then that. Um, as far as multi-tool goes, as far as one that is, um, easiest to use, has the most tools available, um, high quality, it's this Swiss um, multi-tool. Pliers are good, I like how they dangle. I think Leatherman has new versions of these, but just the quality is higher. Tools are typically what I need. And then I'll use this little Leatherman juice every now and again, mainly for the pliers, nothing really else. The scissors are blah relative to a normal Swiss Army knife. 
I actually use these to pull third-party GoPro batteries out of my GoPro camera because the little tabs break off when you pull them out. So this is what that this is used for. So that's where I'm at in 2020 with my knife collection. Really like the Benchmade little pocket knives, slip joints. Those are my favorite right now. Of course the Phoenix flashlights. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.